So, uh, welcome all to the May 16th to 2017 Sunderland School Committee meeting. Great. Hope uh, you're doing well. Um, no Michelle tonight. Um, and Keith needs to leave by about 6.45 ish. Yeah. So, we'll so see how we do and might um, jump around a little on the agenda. Um, FYI, under new business, um, for the uh, request to reduce the FY18 budget from the Slenderland Select Board, I'd like to have a vote on that. Um, so, ideally, to go uh, back to them so they can review that finance committee and uh, have it ready for the um, special town meeting for June 16. All right. So... That said, uh, we'll um, start with reviewing and approving minutes from the April meeting. Any discussion? So this is what I have, and you need to oh. sign it. This is a Oh, yeah, that's right. No fade ever for the archives paper. <laughs> yes, we've got to do it in blue or black. All right. There we go. I've signed it. Thank you so much. Did Thank everyone get a so, copy of these in your packet? Yeah, yeah, we got it. Yep, and I, I did check it out. Um, I've checked it out multiple times now. I'm good with it. And anything else? <laughs> I'm fine. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second, all right. Okay, so that Keith was... and Maisie. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. You know. Thank you. Uh, financial statements and. Okay, so um, I did send you your report. And um, we're still running um, to the positive. Um, I have no outstanding concerns right now. Um, we will be coming to you with a list of projects um, that we would like to do in June when we close the books, if there's any available funds. Uh, we'll be working with uh, the principal and with Bob Lesko to talk about what we can do. But we, knew, we do know that um, off the top, we're going to need to pay any bad debt from the school lunch program. And also, um, in the budget that we're going to talk about, we reduced $2,000 from general supplies and instructional material supplies. So Mr. Barshevsky is going to have to use $2,000 of the first available funds to replace that money we're going to pre-buy <clears throat> with this year's money. Okay. Um, you have 11 warrants tonight for your signatures, which total $101,631.03. And we also have six pages of the summer payroll warrants for you to sign, so we don't have to chase you down all summer. <clears throat> all right. um, any questions on the financial report? All good? All right, thank you. Um, public comment, don't see any public tonight. Um, so, uh, I mean, I think with the timing right now, we're looking good. Uh, we can just go on to the, as um, scheduled for the uh, school choice recommendations. Um, and then if we, seems like it's very lengthy discussion, we can table it and then come. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Uh, <clears throat> sure, away. our current kindergarten numbers are at 29. Um, yet we still think it makes sense to wait until June to see um, where those numbers go within the next month before we recommend, if any, additional openings. There are a few other residents in town um, that we've heard might be coming, but we haven't been able to make contact with their families yet. Okay. And I forget, so, and that 29, does that include any siblings? Yep. Of, yeah. That includes four school choice siblings okay. right now. So if so it's okay, recommendation is to table till June. Table till June. Okay. Yeah. Any other classes where you'd want to, or or it just makes sense to do it all. Together? I think um, tabling it all until yeah. June makes sense. Going into the initial proposal, we had kindergarten and sixth grade <clears throat> as the two grades with openings. Yep. Um, and it's still looking like you'll okay. remain that way. Okay. All of the grades are right up against the um, bubble as to you know not wanting to bring in more students. Yeah, and what's the target number for kindergarten again? 18, 18. We were saying 18 in K through two and 20 in three through six. 18, two classes of 18. Two classes of 18, So right. that's 36, and we're, like, we're at 29. We're so at 29 right now. Six yep. in play. 
Yep, six or seven in play. But also remember, between this time last year and the start of the school year, we had nine residents move in. Over so, the over the summer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do we know how many houses are available for purchase at this time, like at the same time last year? <laughs> Do we know how many rent, uh, housing units are yeah, not in the market? I'm looking into that. Maybe we can get that before June. Uh, give us some ideas and also, uh, yeah. Because I do remember that when we did the, the, the most of the move-ins over the summer, had purchased homes. Maybe we can uh, get Justine Rose Warren on the case and see like, okay, of the homes that are on the market, which ones are like, you know, family starter houses. <laughs> um, <laughs> just saying. Anyway, um, okay. I mean, because like if they're in, uh, what's that one place, the one condo place where I think it's like no kids, right, in the uh, bylaws? Or no, I don't know. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Kind of a shut. Anyway. Um, so when we get to June, and we still have those six openings, at that point do you think you'd still want to keep Hold on to some just in case they're moving in, move and then offer some school choice. Yes. Or? Yeah. So it would be more of a. Like Dude, if, split if, what's remaining. If any, there. we'd probably be recommending two or three. Okay. Um, and wouldn't want to use up all six or seven spots. Right. Through school choice. Yep. I mean, because it's, it's also something where, uh, you know, in September, if it turns out for some, you know, we didn't have, a, you know, a lot of move ins over the summer. I mean, we could always go back to families and sure. say, hey, you know, I know this is late, but if you're still interested. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, yeah, we want to protect ourselves against pushing ourselves over really where we want to be classroom size wise. Right. And then just, yeah. I, I also want to be careful, like with respect to the classroom teachers and, yeah. you know, it's, I mean, we're always welcoming with open arms when, when kids come in mid-year, but yeah. um, sometimes, you know, if we were to accept school choice students partway through, it feels a little bit different. I guess than what I would think, I would, yeah. I mean, I'm more, maybe what we do is in the June meeting, give you some discretion in August mm -hmm. uh, before the school year starts um, to make some, some calls okay. and, you know, and add some some if you know if you you know you know you got coming in on day one and it we're still well below mm -hmm. that um 36. yeah that makes sense yeah okay. so of the 29 now that includes siblings <clears throat> yes are there any applications that we have that by tabling until june we're telling them just wait a little bit longer or are we still wide open for siblings or for just general just school choice we have i forget the number 10 or 12. okay um kindergarten school choice okay oh. yep and actually, the communication we've given to those families has been, you know, the numbers are kind of tight right now. We'll have a better sense in either May or June. Okay. So there's no surprises going towards them. Okay. And we, well, we let all families know one way or the other. Just so they're not hanging. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, yeah. As long as it's before the end of the school year, that's... Everybody, everybody's in the same boat trying to figure out what they're doing next year. So, right. Yes. So, a motion to table till June. I'll make it. <laughs> I'll second. This is going to be a vote, okay? Yeah. Yep. Doug motion. Um, all right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Unanimous. Thanks. All right. So then uh, we have discussion uh, union. Non-union salary recommendations. Um, so that, and, and that's and then with a vote coming in June. Is that right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, Patty has them ready today. I think I, I'm thinking behind that is that, <coughs> that uh, used to be presented to you and then asked you to vote that night. But this will give you a chance to look it over. Mm -hmm. It is actually what it is is a. Um, uh, two percent cost of living mm -hmm. um, that um, would have been established before my time and uh, what, what had been working is the uh, the CBA the collective bargaining unit for the unions the IAs mm -hmm. and the um, was six percent over three years mm -hmm. except it was one percent last year because it wasn't really in the budget 2.5 <coughs> this year and 2.5 next year 
So what had been done previous to me was that we would do two, 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 so mm -hmm. they would have the same yeah. cost of living increases that the uh, that the union, right. the, that the, the collective bargaining units have. Yep. So that's what this shows. This shows a 2% increase. And this is consistent, is this, this matches what we've got in our budget? This uh, has been put in. When Patty made the there. budgets, it was <clears throat> that mm -hmm. one page um, that yep. she had all the pluses proposed increase for nine million. Yeah, she yeah, had yeah, to yeah, that yeah, 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 that's what I, um, I mean, I don't know, uh, I mean, we're there, what they're doing this year, but I would hope again, like, that, uh, I mean, that this is the kind of thing that they, they would be looking to go after, um, this year, so I, you know, um, yeah, not otherwise, unless we're, I mean, effectively, if we don't do this, we're, we're, we're giving people pay cuts because <laughs> uh, inflation probably is going to be 2% or more this year. And we already voted this in at the regional level as well. Okay. Good to know. You voted it or are you considering it? I think <clears throat> last yeah. meeting was it? We're you considering it. You We're considering We got the information. Yeah. 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 All right. <clears throat> so you have a, before you vote on this, you All have right. a month. Oh, so we have a month to. Yeah. Well, well, when is our June meeting? I can tell you. I can tell you there's 16 houses for sale in Sunderland. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. June what meeting is a geodesic. The 20th. 20th. So it'll be after the special town meeting. So we'll have even more info by then. It'll be right after that. No, the 20th is sixth grade graduation. Well, then you didn't. No one told me we moved the meeting. <laughs> I have June 6th. Let me check my, uh... Was, was that voted when I wasn't here? Uh... This is Tuesday. Sunderland. I have the 16th. Oh, no, next month. month. <laughs> well, this month it's the 16th, in case you know. And we're here. <clears throat> I don't have Sunderland, I have I the 6th. I have June 6th. I have May, June 6th in Sunderland here in this room. Well, that might not be a good idea. I mean, I, I, mean, I know that yeah. his graduation is the 20th, but we probably would, uh, if something happens. You know what? I'm going to write. I'm going to suggest that we. Uh, oh, yeah. So go, go, I'm sorry, jumping in, but knowing where you're going, that we table our meeting until after the special town meeting, um, the special town meeting. is the 16th is Friday the 16th and so I would say if graduation is the 20th then uh, we could do the 19th nothing says we can't we have do to do a it different on day Tuesday of the week. yeah um, well how about this I mean uh, I mean do we want to figure out everybody's schedules the second or I can do it by email do we need to I mean, can, uh, la, 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 la. can we do that? You I can take a vote to, to move the meeting to move the after meeting the town meeting after the town to meeting determined. to be determined by the chair. How's that sound? Yeah, Sounds good. Fair. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. And, and I can throw it to the 19th work for me. Me too. Okay. Yeah. It would work for me too. Work for you. 19th. So 19th <laughs> is a likely candidate, but um, let's. Uh, I mean, in case Ben, if that's going to be crazy for you right before graduation, we could wait until. Um, Anyway, we'll, we'll. So, we I'll get, I'll, so does that motion work for you, everybody? Yeah. yeah. Okay. To be determined. All right. Good timing. Um, hey, Doug. <laughs> in fact, hello. Hey, welcome. Uh, <laughs> the motion was made by you. Made by uh, eh, probably shouldn't be made by me. Okay. Since motion. I motion to move the June school committee meeting to a uh, date to be determined later after the special town meeting. And to be determined, and to be, to be determined. And right. finalized by the? By the chair. Chair. By the chair. Unacceptable. Works for me. Mm -hmm. I hope it works for you. This, this motion that I'm not making? No. Okay. <laughs> all right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we're Thank you. All right. Um, all right. So, um, 
So we've got uh, to review the request to reduce the um, FY18 budget from uh, Senator and Secretary. And as, uh, so in this, and Patty can say more, but in here, I, my understanding is what we have here in budgetary information tonight has been just amended only with the, on page two of seven, in bold up at the top, that was the sentence and then the paragraph after. And then everything else is still the same, so it doesn't reflect. Anything else that changed is highlighted in yellow. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Right. So some things like the, uh, for example, in the text below it, like the total amount would actually be reduced. Correct. Um, but, um, and I, I'll, uh, I will make those, correct. Yep. If you, once you vote this, I will make those final and then I'll get everybody out a new final voted right. budget right. Um, again. Okay. But I didn't want to go through all the changes yep. and then not have you guys accept it and then have to do it all over again. So I kind of shortcutted it. <laughs> We can handle the math. Uh, yeah, and actually, the, and then on page seven of seven, though the number is does reflect that reduction. So okay, yeah, awesome, yeah. So we received a letter on May 9th, uh, Dr. Carey, um, and, and the members of the Sunderland Elementary School, um, that due to the uh, Proposition Two and a Half over for at ride, the Select Board of the Town of Sunderland was asking us to look at our budget and see if we could reduce by ten to twenty thousand dollars. So um, one of the first things when we started looking, okay, where can we make these cuts? It was brought to my attention that we had an additional amount of money in our early childhood revolving account that I was not aware of back in December. Um, and it was due to one of our resident early childhood students moved out of town mid-year. And the new town could not accept that child in early their early uh, childhood. So they asked us if we would keep him or her till June 30th, and um, they paid us some tuition to do that. So we went back and we worked the numbers in the early revolving. So what we were able to do was we were usually charge about $20,000 per year um, of a salary to that account. So we are gonna roll this money over to next year because it is a revolving account, and we'll be able to take $10,000 more of a salary of a teacher and, and allocate it to the early childhood revolving account. Uh, then Ben and I and Dr. Carey met and we feel that um, with what we're proposing, with what we're on track to spend this year, we have about an additional $2,000 that we could pre-buy some supplies, uh, general supplies and uh, instructional materials and supplies. Can't say that. Um, from next year's budget, we could pre-buy this year. So then we reduced a thousand from general supplies and a thousand from instructional. And we had, um, when we look at page seven, um, we had asked for an increase of two thousand to the general supplies. So it still looks like we're asking for an increase of a thousand, but it had been two thousand. Um, and the, and the reason we had asked for the initial increase was due to the increase in students. Uh, so we think with the 10,000 and the two cuts, the two reductions of 1,000 in each of those accounts, $12,000 is um, reasonable and we can do that. So that is what we're proposing to you tonight. Um, okay, thank you. Um, and I'll just preface uh, or, or start the discussion by saying, you know, um, Number of us were at the select board meeting a week ago Monday, and you know, and what I said there, I'll say again, which is, um, I think, uh, you know, given that um, you know this year that we there is a the town absolutely has a structural, <laughs> uh, um, you know, deficit issue, uh, you know, given without a, a, a prop two and a half override. Um, but the, the, you know, when that bites really is more next year than this year. Um, and so while, and, and so part of why I was in favor of seeing the override on the go this year was if it were to fail to have a year, um, to, to take that and, 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 and work on that and, and look at our budget and, 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 you know, whatever changes, if there are going to be changes not to do that on short notice this year, but rather work on longer notice toward next year and, and whatever, whatever other 
revenue options might be available, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so not to look to, to cut um, things, you know, in the school this year uh, that are going to, you know, impact education in the classroom, I think. So I appreciate, you know, that we were able to <laughs> find some, some, some revenue offsets um, that help us reduce what we're requesting from the town. Um, and, you know, honestly, if we're in a position, you know, where we had to do more coming out of town meeting or something like that, I mean, my inclination, as much as I wouldn't want to cut school choice closer to, to, to where we're at, you know, that's where I would advocate doing it. I don't want to make cuts this year. I don't like it in a, in a way that are going to affect what's going on um, in the classrooms. I just think we're, there's no fat in, this, in these programs. They're, you know, excellent where they're running right now. But if we make cuts, we're going to, you know, put that at, at peril. Um, and, and I don't want to do that this year. Personally, that's, you know, that's my feeling about it. So, um, you know, I, these, this, these recommendations make sense for me to go into town meeting with. Um, or, you know, go to the finance committee. Uh, when is the finance committee meeting, Scott? Yeah. Finance meeting tonight. Oh, is it tonight? But this won't be a fund recommendation. If okay. I start getting the inputs. If I could, they'll be coming back with the inputs. Right. What looks like a revenue stream, uh, if there are any adjustments in that side. Yep. Uh, reductions on the town side. Yep. Which our department head meeting is on Thursday. Okay. And uh, again, we're looking to, to bridge that gap, not on the not on the backs of education. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. So, yeah, that's my twenty-five cents worth. <laughs> Any other? I think it makes sense too, but I think we should point out that we can't do this again next year. Like these same right. This it is not same band-aid right. is not available next year. It's not a recurring yeah fund. Yeah. Well, in, in in addition, like I like we've talked about, um, you know, with whatever else before we get into <laughs> step increases or. or um, you know, cost of living and contracts. Um, we have an adjustment of seventy-five to one hundred thousand dollars in terms of how we're spending out of school choice that has to happen next year, or else we would end the, the year in a deficit, which we can't do. So we know that out of the gate. So that's it's a significant problem to to deal with. And Mr. Fulton, I will have those. Um, I will work this summer to get those estimates so that we know what our salary adjustments are in September, okay. so that we can start looking that at that early next year. Great. Yep, great. Um, I've had my metaphors used. I mean, that I agree with you that we shouldn't use the, 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 we don't want to cut in the middle or right at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. But this is a band aid on a little cut. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, I don't know, tomorrow yeah. next year, it, it, it's going to be that's yeah. where my concern is. Yeah. Um, between the structural deficit in the town and what we have to move over on, um, it's. Uh, the cuts are going to have to happen next year, it looks like, but I mean, that's my concern right now. You know, and, and you know, part of my, I guess, part of my um, hope is that uh, rather than, you know, scare people <laughs> or, uh, um, drive people away with cuts this year um, is, you know, encourage participation towards solutions over this coming year. Um, so, yeah, um, and um, help us figure this out. So, so if I could, if I could yeah. uh, first, first of all, thanks uh, the administration and the, and the committee for taking another look. I think that I, I've, my experience is that the discussion, when things are, are good, we're all moving in the same direction. Also, when things get uh, a little tight, it's the elementary school and general uh, government that has to move in the same direction. We, have, we live by about 40% of our budget based on assessments, mm -hmm. and it just comes, and we're part of larger communities, and we simply pay that. Um, all that's been said both tonight as well as at prior meetings at the at, during the budget hearings is a series of analogies. There's a, there's there's a certain amount of money that comes in. There's an expectation of in this case here the the, the electorate uh, on the, on the revenue side, 
but also invariably the community as a whole. And uh, you know, we, as, as members of the board, uh, take the education piece really, really seriously. And the notion that we're kind of hamstrung having to come to the elementary school, to town departments, and then adjusting revenues, if they're even available, or benefits for non-negotiated non staff is, um, frankly, it's always terrible. There's, there's no good way out of it. Um, so I just want to say again, thanks for taking a look at this. Mm -hmm. The town side, we, we, we're coming into, we're coming out of town meeting with about $63,000 of, of structural deficit. And we know the, the trajectories between expenses of the elementary school and, and other areas are, are such that they need to be, we need to dampen that gap, yeah. right? That's just really important. We need to dampen that, whether it's on a revenue stream or expenses somewhere else. Having said that, um, we have to go Thursday, Monday, Tuesday of next week and look at that, recognizing the current environment on the revenue side, whether it's, whether it's the state aid and the chapter, uh, on the chapter 70 side, or whether it's uh, local general aid, that is something that the town of Sunderland gets a little bit accused of uh, being too conservative on. And if you look at our available free cash prior to this anomaly this year, it's been pretty predictable. I think formulaically, having learned from 2009, we've been okay in that, that kind of range. This year going out of uh, or into the fiscal year, out of the current fiscal year, it's a little dicey. I think we hear at the state level, we're gonna try to scrape through this year. We're going to look at those available rainy day funds. We're gonna look at declining revenues on the state level. That invariably impacts the towns, collectively, all 351 of us. Yeah. So uh, I guess if I was to close, it would be that you know we're, we're looking at this uh, collectively and uh, in the same boat. It's just never easy. Twelve thousand is really helpful. Yeah, I, mean, I just uh, I think it was this morning hearing that uh, state senate starting their budget deliberations for this FY sure. budget and starting with a revenue deficit of three hundred fifty-one million or something. You know, so uh, it's so the Ouija board of entry, right? <laughs> it's like where does it all end up landing? And I think the preparedness, understanding the, the the growth in the community you've got here, the elementary school, that's really important as a narrative going forward, yeah. as well as you know where we can continue to uh, provide the services for uh, the larger community that somehow for some reason, you know, post kids decides the elementary school is not part of the community anymore. And then go ahead, call me about that. I get it, you know. <laughs> Thank you. And, I, and I'll try and, um, you know, refine or whatever my, my uh, narrative for the, for the meeting to, to kind of make that even clearer because it sounded like, it, you know, from the select board meeting there was um, a lack of clarity about where the increases in the school are coming from. And um, like you just said, I mean, and we've talked about here, I mean, you know, it's, it really is a simple story of uh, a significant growth in the number of kids we're educating here. So, um, and, you know, and that's like up 40% almost uh, over the last four years. So that's a dramatic increase. <laughs> uh, and it, you know, and hence, you know, the, the, the budgetary increase, that, you know what I mean, so. Um, May I ask a question? Yeah, oh yeah, sorry. <clears throat> No, so we, <clears throat> so we have this discussion and this is what we came up with. Now, do we, and Patty, maybe you can help me, do we vote on this or vote on it next time? Uh, no, I think yeah, the school committee needs to set it tonight if they're going to need it. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to do that, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no. Just the notes on it. Appreciate it. Okay. More discussion? Or? Are you going to do a quick walk through the bike, uh, the, the rest of this, or? I was just pointing out the three changes. Everything else was the same. Okay. So, so the uh, using money from the revolving fund, an additional ten thousand from the revolving fund, uh, thousand out of general supplies. 
and a thousand out of instructional materials and supplies. Right. To refill. So for twelve. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and you know if if uh, if town if the town meeting ends up delivering us a different number, I, I hope it doesn't. But if it did, uh, we have our. Well, that's why we'll have, we'll do our meeting after. My feeling. If I could, as a point of clarity, we, we, the goal of the select board is to bring to town meeting as our youngest son, graduate of this building, said, uh, is a fickle, fickle creature. You never really know uh, to bring a balanced budget and to not have uh, too much in the way of uh, hysteria. Yeah, great. So, Uh, motion or uh, to adopt the budget that's presented? The uh, three changes? I'll second it. Any additional discussion? Mm -hmm. uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. So, with your permission, I'll make the final changes and I will email that to Sherry Patch, the town administrator, and send you all a copy as well. And I'll change all the verbiage all the way through. Yep, quick. Awesome. Thanks. <coughs> all right. Um, reports. Uh, any committee meetings? All right. Principal Barshevsky. Great. Um, on May 2nd, Sunderland Elementary School participated in Valley Gives Day which is a day where non-charitable, um, or excuse me, charitable and non, um, non-profit organizations in Franklin, Hampshire, and Hamden counties um, try to do fundraisers. And uh, this was our first time participating in it, in it at Sunderland Elementary School. And we were able to raise $3,000 towards an indoor rock climbing traversing wall, which is gonna be on the back of the stage in the, in the gymnasium. We're still $7,000 short, and we have a spring fun run scheduled for Friday, May 26th. And right now, students are um, trying to raise some funds for that as well. We hope to have the wall constructed in early August if we're able to raise enough funds, and also with some, um, some other revenue coming from the PTO that they've uh, allotted towards the wall. How much is it short at this time? Uh, 7000 okay. So it's going to be around $10,000 <clears> to yeah. put in. Yeah. Uh, we recently held our annual family fun night celebration. 200 folks were in attendance for the spaghetti dinner and academic games, which were led by our sixth grade student ambassadors, um, our school psychologist and guidance counselor, Vicki Palmer, and our uh, community coordinator, Karen Green, played instrumental roles in helping to make it um, happen. Additionally, um, the Sunderland Fire Department helped out and uh, student nurses from Greenfield Community College. Um, flipping over to the back side, uh, important dates and events happening at the elementary school. Next week, uh, or tomorrow is a PTO meeting, the next week we have our cafe sunset and that's an evening where students um, perform in front of friends family and guests. We have our visitation day on May 25th for kindergarten. Um, there's field trips coming up. There's a dine out night at Bridgeside Grill. Our Sunderland in Action Day is June 1st. And as we know, that's a day of community service where we do projects both on campus and around town. Uh, Junior Olympics, our spring carnival is on June 7th. Uh, spring walk and roll day. And the list keeps going and going and going. Mm -hmm. um, graduation this year for sixth grade is June 20th and our final day of school is Monday June 26th oh and I should also mention that on Saturday June 3rd all states materials group is sponsoring a road race um, and this year um, it's to benefit Sunderland Elementary School there's a 5k walk or run and then there's a 10k run um, and I've, um, in discussions with all states, we've talked about having some of the money go towards new Chromebooks for the elementary school. Yeah. 
Any questions? Dr. Carey. Um, spring Carnival. Is that in the, in the building or is it outside? Or? It's a little of both. Um, there's a bounce house, there's face painting, there's a dunk tank, which I always seem to end up in year after year. Um, there's a band. It's, uh, it's a good way to close the school year. Wonderful. Yeah. And that's in the evening. That's a really wonderful. Families mm -hmm. can come yep. to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a nice, I think uh, it's been going for about six years now, something like that. Um, something, uh, actually, I, I still current parent, uh, Tracy Zachary, mm -hmm. had pushed for a few years and then got it over the hump. And now I think a really nice tradition, uh, just bringing families out. And, and one thing I actually didn't mention, um, a couple weeks ago, Bub's Barbecue hosted a dine out night to benefit Central Elementary School as well. Always good to the school. Yeah, certainly are. Any other questions? Thanks. Superintendent here. This is my superintendent's report. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I only may, I, I hope there's enough. I thought there were only three people here. So um, <clears throat> just a quick look back at April. A much of April was dedicated to discussing and defending the budgets. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who did come out to support our schools. Um, the, I learned so much at the town meeting that Friday night. I was still kind of recovering from the flu, but um, we stayed until 10 o'clock and it was, I just learned a lot. I learned a lot about the town and I left with a feeling like this is a really great town to live in. The enthusiasm for the, 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 the 300th and, and all the exciting things that are happening. And I just, the people that came up and spoke, um, the community projects, the, all the things that they want to do to enhance behind the library, the town library. And I just thought these people are so dedicated to this town and uh, are really actively working to make it a better place, to make it a place for everyone. And I was here today visiting. I wish I came, can come more often. And I'm hoping in June I'll let up the, he you know, the heavy lifting will let up and I'll be able to visit more. But I was, there's so many different faces in this school when I was here. I just saw so many different children and so many different faces. Um, the diversity in the school is, is really, it's just really nice to see. But the one thing that really struck me today as I was walking out is the teachers, the adults, the IAs and the teachers, literally every single one I saw had you know one child or two children, but, but they were all connecting with these kids. They were putting them on the bus, and they were all saying something special to one or two children. And um, they're so these adults have such an effect on these kids' lives. They're walking them to the bus, and they're just connecting. And it wasn't one, and it wasn't two. It was like, I don't know, eight or nine adults, <clears throat> different grade levels, different kids, and they were all connecting, saying their goodbyes. It was, I was just really struck by that. I don't see it, that kind of thing that often. And, uh, and then I do have to tell you, a little first grader tied her shoes together, her shoelaces together, and they tried and tried, they couldn't undo it, so they, they didn't want her to miss the bus, and they're walking, you can't be barefoot, so they're walking her out to the bus, and three adults were down there trying really hard, and then finally they did it, and everyone was watching the adults, they were all the parents, and hey, it's done. And so that was great. And having said that, I would just like to talk, um, it, it's, time has gone on, but last week, um, actually, <coughs> I think it was the week before, was Teacher Appreciation Week. And I wanted to take a moment to thank each and every one of our outstanding teachers who give of themselves to their students and to their profession every day to prepare our collective students to have a fulfilling and meaningful future. They are preparing children, our children, to be balanced global citizens in an increasingly internationalized, technology-driven, fast-changing world. They design learning experiences to guide our children to envision and plan a future 
they will not only live in, but a future where they can change because we have given them the tools. The teachers have given them the tools to be able to change their future. At the end of the day, this is what the school committee is here for. This is what the community expects. And this is what the taxpayers support. But it all comes together behind a magic door where our gifted and wonderful teachers work with our most important resource, our children. They are the core of everything we do. Thank you, teachers, for all your hard work. So that's my, <clears throat> partially my thing. I also have um, my eval, and I wanted to, to pass that out to you too. Uh, Ken cut it back, put it together. He can't be here tonight. Of course, I only made three copies, but I have one. I just need to, to read it to you, but we'll pass I'll it on. down. And I'll <coughs> send it to you. So, essentially, and um, I, I will tell you, for me, it's very hard to, this is the first time that I've been evaluated in public. It's a wonderful evaluation. I'm proficient in every area, and my goals are met. Um, but some of the, um, the comments were so helpful. And I would just like to, to just mention Keith because he gave me a list of things that I could do. So, you know, instruction and curriculum, I have a doctorate in that. So, you know, that's kind of a given. That's my love. That's my passion. Management, you know, that was a given. But when it came to communicating, you know, um, speaking more, being out there more, uh, and producing PR for the district. I think people felt that I needed to be more, more out there, more aggressive, more um, doing that. So therefore, you have seen what I'm going to do for the school committee to help them understand the complexities of everything I do. I'm sending out that newsletter every two weeks so that you just get an idea of, you know, I have five school districts, and I'm doing this for this group, and this for this group, and I'm meeting these people, and these, you know, just so you know what I'm doing. So you know you're getting value for your <laughs> for your money, and um, so <coughs> this is the write up from Ken Cutterback, who went through with me. I met with them, Ken and Cindy, who met. Um, I don't know, it was like two or three hours uh, a couple of Friday nights ago. So he computed the average, and it's so funny because um, I gave a, a book with so much information. And I think it was just too much. So I'm going to cut down and change things a little bit up for next year. But um, so my seven goals, uh, the six were met, one significant uh, standard, uh, that was standard one superintendent. Standard two, instructional leadership proficient, uh, management and operations proficient, um, consistently re recognized. I was, Dr. Carey was consistently recognized for her work in completing the recommendations and the eventual move of the central offices. So people really recognized that that was good. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to community engagement, the performance is proficient. She received proficient ratings in three out of four indicators with a needs improvement rating for communications. And so my job, as it were, is to figure out a way to get out there more. Um, I go to all the evening activities. My calendar is full. And uh, I go to the high school sporting events. I've been to two basketball games, two volleyball. I try to just split up my time. But I think I'm, what I'm hearing is we need to communicate more. I need to get out there more. Uh, pro professional culture, <coughs> proficient. Um, uh, let's see, it is also important to note shared vision and managing conflict indicators received ratings that were split between needs improvement and proficient, indicating those were areas where Dr. Carey can work to improve her communication and sharing of her vision. We are having a, uh, a retreat, uh, uh, an administrative retreat on June 29th, and I'm working on exactly that so the vision and the mission will be front and center on our web page it will be on everything we do so that i agree is an important task and with everything else i undertook this year um, i need to do that and then ken says the committee evaluation provides a summary rating of met expectations for dr carey's goals 
uh, proficient rating on her progress and performance for the four standards included in the evaluation. We commend Dr. Carey on a successful first year in the Union 38 community and look forward to her con continued work in the community. And I want to say I appreciate everyone's feedback. Um, I worked very hard this year and not only being new to the superintendency but five districts and everything, but my team behind me, my admin team, Patty, Karen, the whole, all the bookkeepers, everybody in the central office has really helped me. And I also have the finest uh, group of principals working with me as well. They're, they're excellent, they're right on top of their schools and it's just a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> I can keep this one? Yes. I think. Yeah. That's my master. Uh, can I yeah. send you a PDF? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kind sorry. Of, yeah, that's fine. That's, that's my master. That's totally fine. I only thought they were going to... I think we misconstrued Mr. McFarland's email. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I need to communicate better. Uh, All right. Uh, that brings us no, no executive session, so uh, brings us to adjournment. Motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Good. 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 Good.